This is going to be a quick tutorial on how to get your eBay account set up and ready for drop shipping. So the first step is, uh, it's kind of weird, but we have to list an item to be able to get access to all the features. So I'm just going to do a search for something and we're just going to list a random item. So let's do a dog bed. <clears throat> and we'll just pick one of them. And this doesn't really matter because we're going to end this listing. We just have to have listed something to be able to access all of the features. So I'm just going to come down here and hit sell now. All right. And I'm just going to change this to buy it now. And I'll make it $150 so that nobody buys this. And we'll say list it. Now we need to set an automatic payment method, so I'm just going to do PayPal and just link that to the uh, same PayPal. I'll probably blur this out. All right, so now we have to accept the billing agreement, just as giving them permission to bill us for our fees and stuff. Great, okay, so we've got an eBay listing up, so I'm just going to click here and get back, back here. So right off when you make an eBay account, you get this ugly looking dashboard here. We want to stop using this and start using Seller Hub. So I'm going to Google search Seller Hub, ebay.com slash Seller Hub. And so we're going to say start using Seller Hub. Let's go. And just get out of this tutorial here. Great. So we're now opted into Seller Hub, and it usually takes a couple couple days to go through, but... Once it goes through, you can just click My eBay, and that'll take you right here to Seller Hub. But until then, you have to do My eBay and then click Selling, and that'll take you to this page. Um, also, easy link to remember, if you go to ebay.com sh, that'll take you to your Seller Hub. All right, so now we have to get to configuring all the settings to be correct for drop shipping. So we're going to go to Account Settings, Site Preferences. And then this is the out of stock option. So on eBay, by default, the way that it works is when you are selling something and then you say you have, you know, for example, three available. And then once you are out of stock, your listing automatically ends and just disappears from all of eBay. So if you check this button, then that will make it so that your listing will stay active even when you have zero available. And that's really important because the way that eBay ranks stuff is um, based on how recently it was listed and how recently it's sold. So if you have an item that's selling a lot, say you've sold 100 of them, and then you get to zero, you don't have this checked, then it goes out of stock. Oh no, you just lost all that, all the benefits you would have had from selling it 100 times and, and you know your positioning uh, in the system. So by checking this, you can just go back in, update the quantity, and then you don't have anything that you're losing. So you check that uh, to turn out of stock option on. And then let's find Combined Payments. All right, Combined Payments. So we want to turn that to No. So don't allow buyers to send Combined Payments. Next, we want to turn on the Unpaid Item Assistant. So Unpaid Item Assistant. Here we go. And click Edit. Yes, I want to use the unpaid item assistant, and we're going to set this to two days, real time, real time, yes. And then sometimes there will be another line here that says, like, request a refund on my eBay giving works donation or whatever it is, um, and you set to that to yes as well. And we're going to hit save. Okay, great. So now we're going to need to look for the return preferences, so let's search for return. Now, these are some automatic rules for how to handle returns. Uh, by default, the way that eBay works is if a buyer requests a return and it looks like they're eligible, they will just automatically let the buyer buy a return label at your expense to ship it back to you. But that's not how we want to do this. Uh, we want to do this so that we can send them a return label from Amazon. So we're going to check here to turn RMA number on. So this means whenever a buyer wants to return it, they'll have to you'll have to approve it and give them an RMA number, which gives you a chance to upload a prepaid return label that you got from your supplier. So we check that, and then it's kind of weird. There's nothing you have to click save on or anything, so I'm just going to refresh the page and make sure that that's stuck. All right, it looks like it did, so we're good there. So the next thing here is personal information. So 
I'm just going to open that. So here you can click edit and make a username for your store. You also want to make sure that all this information matches your information. Just make sure that it's all up to date. Um, additionally, if your limits are not very high, a easy way to get really high limits right off the bat is to change your account type to a business. And um, then when you're talking to them on the phone, they'll be uh, more likely to give you an increase. The next thing you're going to want to do is opt into business policies. If you go to listings, and get past this uh, startup tutorial here, you'll see business policies right here on the bottom left. So go ahead and click on that. And we're going to opt in. Great, so now we're using business policies. So essentially what that means is instead of setting all of the details manually on every single listing uh, for shipping and payment and all that stuff, we can set them one time and then just select from a dropdown on our listings. So um, we're going to go through and edit all of these. So payment. Payment should be PayPal, immediate pay. Yeah, this is just a description for you, so you know do whatever your email is there so that you know what it is. Um, you got your PayPal email. And I don't require immediate payments with Buy It Now because sometimes people will just want to buy it and they'll want to pay in a couple days. And since we turned on that unpaid item assistant, if they don't pay, it'll automatically get us a refund for our eBay fees. So um, I usually just uh, let people buy it and then pay later. So you're going to hit Save and Confirm. Now let's edit our return policy. So if you're going to be doing... Uh, Amazon to eBay drop shipping. we can get free labels from Amazon 99% of the time. So we always accept returns. So I'm going to change this to my return policy. Set as default return policy. We're going to accept domestic returns 30 days. If you do shorter than that, um, it can cause some problems. So 30 days. And now if it was buyer's paid returns, uh, the buyer would have to buy a shipping label to return it to you for most cases. Uh, but the issue is they're going to be returning it to your home address and not to Amazon. And since we are drop shipping from Amazon, we want to be able to get our money back from Amazon. So we're going to do free returns, which gives us the chance to upload a label for them. And then when they ship it back, it goes to Amazon and Amazon will refund us as soon as they receive it. So as soon as Amazon refunds us, then we can refund the buyer. Um, international returns, leave that off. Um, all this other stuff can stay off. So just domestic, 30 days, free returns. Um, I'll just make a note here for us. Free returns for any reason. It's easier that way. And then click Save and confirm it. All right, so now shipping. Now, we only do Amazon Prime drop shipping, so everything is going to have a really, really good shipping time. So I'm just going to name this policy Free Fast shipping and the note for us three day handling one day shipping now the reason uh, that we're going to do it this way is because this will get us fast and free on eBay there's a little uh, little way that you can get it to show up to say fast and free which will make people want to choose you over somebody else and um, also if we make it you know, we could say one day handling, three day shipping, but if we do it this way, that gives us three days before we have to upload a tracking number, uh, which can help a lot. So we're going to change this to flat, same cost to all buyers, free shipping. Change the drop down here to the one day shipping. Handling time, three business days, and no international shipping. And then go ahead and click save. Now back over here on Seller Hub, you'll notice that eBay gave us some limits. Actually, I'm not even really seeing them right here. Generally, your eBay your limits show up right here, and the promotional offers is there. But I think it's because we uh, we have to have a store before we're going to see them. So anyway, right now you can see list 50 items for free, blah blah blah, and then we already used one. I'm going to go ahead and end that listing later, but I'm not going to show that in this tutorial. So you can list, we've got this promo, we can list another 49 items, but we're going to be doing 1,000 items on this store, so 49 is not going to cut it. Once we've used up these promotional listings, they're going to start charging us 30 cents for every single new listing that we create. So for 1,000 listings, that would be you know $300, which is a lot of money uh, just for, for listing a couple things. So the trick to have to pay less on this is to subscribe to an eBay store, because they'll give you more of these. So... 
Let's just search eBay stores. Open a store. There we go. So we're going to look at the different plans here. So most of these plans are not worth it. Um, so the starter plan, not worth it for drop shipping. Basic, I would only use if you cannot get your limits up, but usually it's very easy for them to get you to a thousand, a thousand items. So uh, the premium is usually the one I would recommend. Um, so let's look over this here. So uh, remember, the, the main reason that we're getting a store is just to have those insertions, uh, not have to pay those insertion fees. So we got these 50 for free, but we want to get up to 1,000, so we need 950 more, basically. Um, so fixed price insertion fees, if we get the premium store, you get 1,000 of those included um, with this store. So every month you'll get 1,000 you'll get more insertions. So that's the one that we're really going to want to go with. Also, I do want to point out one thing. You'll notice they have the yearly subscription for $60, and they have the monthly subscription for $75. Now... The yearly subscription is a little bit sneaky. You'd think, oh, I want to do that because it's cheaper. But the terms are if you want to cancel before a year is up, you just have to pay the rest of it. So if you sign up for this, you're promising to pay $600 and there's no way to get out of it without paying that full amount. So I always go with the $75 because you never know what eBay is going to do or change or anything like that. Just stick with the $75. You pay like slightly more per month, but it's worth it because if you ever want to cancel your store, you don't have to pay the rest of it. So go with the monthly. So we're going to select and review. We're going to go with the monthly plan. And there are some other benefits to the store as well, but the really the important thing is the insertion fees. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and submit that. And it wants us to enter our store name. So I will blur this out, but um, I'll ent enter it in here. All right, so as you can see, we are now subscribed to a store. And if I come back here and refresh the page, okay, now you can see promotional offers are here and our listing limits are down here. So promotional offers. Let's show more. Okay, there we go. Premium store subscription, 1,000 fixed price listings. So right there, you've got use zero left 1,000. So I'm going to use those. Um, and then here are our listing limits, which are actually perfect. This is exactly what you need. You're going to want to do 1,000 items, and $25,000 is absolutely perfect for starting out. If you can do 1,000 items and then $25,000, that means you can list 1,000 items that cost $25, and you'll be good. You won't hit your limits. So um, yeah. All right, so that is all of the setup for your eBay account on the eBay account side. Um, I guess I'll just go over a couple little things for new people. When you make a sale, this is where you're going to see your stuff that is awaiting shipment that still needs to be shipped. So if you need to handle stuff, you would open this in here, and you'll have records of your sales in there. Additionally, this is saying seller level forecast unavailable. They only update this like once a month, but essentially the important things are... If you uh, have more than two cases closed against you, your seller level will go below standard, and then basically you won't get any sales for a, a long time until you're able to fix that. So essentially, you never ever want to let your account go below standard. And the only thing that you have to do to keep your account above standard is basically never let anything go to eBay unless you know you're going to win. So for example, if a buyer opens a case against you and says, oh, my item never arrived, but you have tracking proving that it, di it did arrive, you can just upload the tracking number, say, hey, thanks for reaching out. Here's your tracking number. And then even if that does go to eBay, they're going to look at it. They're going to say, oh, here's the tracking number. Look at that. It did arrive. And then you're going to win the case. But um, for any other kind of reasons, like, you know, you have to handle it before it gets to eBay because you'll get a bad mark if eBay has to step in and get involved and review the situation. Um, the only other thing that I want to warn about is that under your uh, awaiting shipment here, if you have a, a sale that, for example, you sold it on eBay, but then it's out of stock on Amazon, then all you need to do is cancel the order here and send a refund to the buyer. So what you want to do is you'll click the little drop down. There'll be a little spot that says print shipping label right here, and there'll be a drop down. You'll click on that, and then it'll be cancel order and contact buyer. So you're going to want open contact buyer in a new tab and cancel order in a new tab. And... There are three possible reasons that you can select for canceling the order. One is there's a problem with the buyer's shipping address. One is the buyer uh, asked to cancel the order. And the other one is I'm out of stock. 
if you select I'm out of stock or the item was damaged, that will instantly put a bad mark on your account. And if you do it more than twice, your account will be basically destroyed. So just rule of thumb, never, ever, ever cancel an order because you're out of stock. Even if you're actually out of stock, you don't say, you don't tell eBay you're out of stock. You select the buyer asked to cancel the order because nothing bad happens to you if you cancel because the buyer asked to cancel the order. And nothing bad happens if you cancel because of a shipping address problem. But if you select because I'm out of stock, eBay thinks you're a bad seller and they give you bad marks that are just as bad as, you know, refusing to refund a buyer um, when you never shipped them the item or something like that. Like it's a very big deal. So just never click that. And as long as you do those things, um, your account will stay above standard. I'll show you one more time. Um, this right here, it says unavailable. It'll take a couple days to be available, but once it is, you can just click that and you can see all of the requirements. And as long as you stay in the gray and, uh, out of the red, your account will be fine and you'll continue getting sales. If you can get it in the green and keep it in the green for more than 90 days for new accounts, um, this is, remember it's updated once a month, uh, then you'll become top rated seller and you'll get even more sales. So anyway, this is just a quick guide on how to set everything up and, uh, good luck dropshipping.